Remember when actor Josh Hartnett was considered a Hollywood heartthrob? He was a big deal in the late 90s and early 2000s, before seemingly dropping off the face of the planet. It seems like he's making a tentative return to the screen, but why are directors hesitating to cast this once big star? Let's find out. Before we get started, make sure to subscribe to The Taco for more videos. Let's begin. Josh Hartnett was born and raised in St. Paul, Minnesota. As soon as he finished high school, he headed out to New York to attend the Conservatory of Theater Arts and Film at SUNY Purchase. However, things didn't go according to his plans, and Hartnett found himself in California by age 19. Like many young actors, he was trying his luck in Los Angeles, but unlike many others, he managed to succeed. He landed a part on the drama Cracker, which was shown on ABC. The series was canceled after only 16 episodes, but while it aired, it was critically acclaimed and shined a huge spotlight on the young actor. The experience caused Josh Hartnett to become interested in acting in feature films, but he was waiting for the right opportunity. He passed the time appearing in plays and commercials before he was cast in the movie Halloween Age 20, 20 years later. The film was a success at the box office and led to a ton of job offers for Hartnett. Soon, he was adding impressive acting credits to his resume. Some of his most notable roles were Black Hawk Down, Pearl Harbor, and The Faculty. And in addition to acting accolades, he was also getting all kinds of other praise from fans. In 1999, he was chosen as one of Teen People's 21 Hottest Stars Under 21, then became one of 25 Hottest Stars Under 25 from the same publication. People magazine named him one of the 50 most beautiful people in 2002. Bliss called him the third sexiest man alive, and even PETA declared that he was the sexiest vegetarian. On the outside, it seemed like Josh Hartnett was making tons of friends in Hollywood, but he was also making a large number of enemies. It's obviously not unheard of for celebrities to turn down roles for various reasons. Scheduling conflicts is the most often cited reason, and it's one that caused Hartnett to drop out of Deuces Wild in order to pursue Pearl Harbor. But after a while, the projects he turned down and how he did so began to sour Hollywood directors against him. As a hot young Hollywood star, Hartnett was getting tons of lucrative offers. Getting cast as a superhero can be an enormous career boost. Plus, the movie will probably do well at the box office and make you a lot of cash. People were eager for Hartnett to be the next big Hollywood hero, but he wasn't so sure. He actually turned down the chance to portray Superman, Spider-Man, and Batman. That might sound crazy to you, and it certainly did to the directors, but Hartnett had his reasons. He claims that once an actor portrays a superhero, that's all anyone thinks of them as, and it begins to define them. We can think of way worse things to be defined as than Batman, but okay. Being typecast in Hollywood is a real thing, and we do often associate actors with their most celebrated roles. However, that isn't necessarily a bad thing, and many would even consider it a huge plus. Obviously, big-name directors aren't used to people turning down superhero roles, and they're especially not used to having young up-and-comer kids telling them that the roles are not good enough for them. Needless to say, this rubbed a ton of directors the wrong way, and word got around. It seemed like Hartnett was getting too big for his britches, and soon, people stopped reaching out to him offering roles. Hartnett's attitude earned the ire of many in Hollywood, and especially that of famous director Christopher Nolan. You might know him as the guy behind some huge blockbusters, including Inception and the Dark Knight trilogy. He's a huge name in Hollywood and not the kind of guy you say no to, and especially not the kind of guy you say no to because you don't want people to associate your career with his movie. Because of Hartnett spurning him, Nolan decided against using him in the hit movie The Prestige. Instead, he hired Hartnett's girlfriend at the time Scarlett Johansson and Nolan's Batman, Christian Bale. As we're sure you all know, that led to Christian Bale starring in the Dark Knight trilogy, which was an enormous smash hit. While those movies were coming out, Hartnett starred in Lucky Number no. 7 and The Black Dahlia. Although both movies were enjoyed by many fans, they were barely blips at the box office. This was an enormous blow to Hartnett's career. He learned a huge lesson about how Hollywood worked that he just didn't know at the time he turned down those roles. While there are a lot of players in Hollywood, it really is like a small town in many ways, and people talk. Getting blacklisted by one director makes it so that nobody else wants to work with you, and that's what happened here. Not only could Hartnett not get any more big roles, but he also had to watch the career trajectory of Christian Bale, and that just had to be humbling. Obviously, Bale has been in tons of successful movies in addition to portraying Batman, and Hartnett admits to being in awe of what he has accomplished. Refusing to play Batman set off a domino effect that ended with Hartnett being blacklisted from most of Hollywood, and that was detrimental to his career.
But it's safe to say that at this point, Hartnett has learned his lesson. Over 10 years since he told Christopher Nolan he was too big to play Batman, he now admits that he would have taken a different approach. He confessed that he would now gladly accept such a role and believes that some compromise is necessary in order to succeed in Hollywood. And his inflated ego wasn't the only thing working against Hartnett at the time. While his attitudes were turning people off, there were other problems in Hartnett's camp. Because he was still a big star, there was a lot of fighting about how to handle his burgeoning career. Hartnett has explained that there was a ton of fighting between his manager and his agents. As his career went into a downward spiral and now nobody wanted to hire him, everyone was trying to pin the blame for this on someone else. Eventually, none of them were able to work together at all, and Hartnett's career was what suffered in this situation. So what do you do when Hollywood won't hire you anymore? Hartnett's solution for that was to star in many indie films, most of which were barely noteworthy. Ironically, he didn't want to play a superhero in order to not be pigeonholed, but instead he ended up being typecast as an indie actor. At the height of his career, he was practically given roles in any major film he wanted. Sure, there were other contenders, but considering his talent and popularity, he had a great chance of landing any project he wanted. After a while, he had to fight tooth and nail for any role that he wanted to play, and if it was for a Hollywood studio, he would probably be turned down. Hartnett has appeared in other movies like Rain, Stuck Between Stations, and Parts Per Billion. But if you haven't heard of them, we don't blame you. He is called appearing in indie films rewarding, but many wonder if that's just because they were his only realistic option for a long time. To add to his troubles at the height of his fame, Hartnett was going through an issue that many celebrities deal with. While fame is a fantastic thing in many ways, it's truly a double-edged sword. Hartnett was having considerable trouble adjusting to his life as a Hollywood heartthrob. Seeing your face on the cover of magazines sounds thrilling, but for Hartnett, it became stressful. It made him feel uncomfortable in his own skin and caused him to feel really and truly alone. He never knew when a casual conversation with a new friend would end up being getting splashed on the cover of a tabloid. Not being able to trust anyone around you is draining, and eventually it got too much for Hartnett to deal with. For the intents and purposes of the public, he had dropped off the face of the earth. In a way, he hit the reset button on his life and did so by returning home to Minnesota. For about a year and a half, he didn't do any filming at all. He only communicated with his old friends that he grew up with and knew that he could trust. As if to really drive home the point he was just going to pretend the whole famous movie star thing didn't happen, he also got back together with his high school sweetheart. At the time, this all seemed like his only option, but in retrospect, Hartnett wishes that he had been more resilient. He's seen other celebrities weather what he went through or worse, and managed to stay strong instead of tucking tail and running. Needless to say, this sabbatical to Minnesota didn't improve the public opinion of Hartnett. Most people didn't know about the real reasons that his career plummeted, or why he retreated to his home state. So what followed was a ton of speculation and ugly rumors that Hartnett now has to deal with upon his return. Finally, in 2012, Hartnett made his return to the public eye, but not to Hollywood. At a time when many people would have advised him to focus on revising his career, he spoke out in support of former President Barack Obama's re-election campaign. To kick things off, he gave a speech at the University of Minnesota. He even admitted to a crowd of 300 people that he felt anxious at the prospect of public speaking after being out of the public eye for so long. We definitely aren't saying that celebrities aren't allowed to have political preferences and to express them publicly. After all, they are still people, just really famous ones. However, expressing your political opinions can make or break your career, and at this time, Hartnett didn't have a lot of career to risk. We admire that Hartnett was willing to risk the potential controversy to stand up for what he believed in, but it probably wasn't the best idea in regards to making a triumphant return to Hollywood. Even though this put him back in the public eye, Hartnett was still a closed book in many ways. Despite dating many stars, such as Amanda Seyfried and Scarlett Johansson, he would never call himself a ladies' man. According to Hartnett, to be a ladies' man, you have to spend your life chasing things, and that's never been something he's willing to do, romantically or career-wise. While filming the critically panned film The Lovers, Hartnett became close with actress Tamsin Egerton, and the two would later go on to become parents together. Becoming a father changed Hartnett in many ways, and one of them was realizing that he had to start bringing home a steady paycheck. While he could have once have afforded to be picky about what sort of projects he chose to work on, he acknowledged that time has long since passed. 
Finally, in 2014, he got his chance to be a part of something that people might actually watch. He was cast as Ethan Chandler in the Showtime gothic horror series Penny Dreadful. The show was a success and reminded us all that Josh Hartnett is a very talented actor. It had been so long we had almost forgotten, and Hartnett was thrilled to be back doing what he loved. He acknowledges that acting is a fantastic way to make money if you're successful, but claims that it's also something that he loves and is passionate about. So is Josh Hartnett going to become a huge Hollywood sellout now? Not not according to him. He hasn't given up on his love of independent films and says that his mainstream success might be able to help them. By making a big name for himself, again, he may be able to draw more attention to smaller film projects. That way, the smaller films might finally get the attention they deserve by having a big star attached to the project. Hartnett is claimed to be older and wiser now regarding his career, but only time will tell if that's true. Maybe after he eats some crow, he'll be able to get work from the studios that he spurned so long ago. He burned a lot of bridges earlier in his career, so it might take him a long time to gather up the wreckage and salvage the good name he had once created for himself. Keep your eyes peeled for his new projects, including Inherit the Viper, Highway, and Valley of the Gods. Do you think that Josh Hartnett deserves another chance to be a big star? Let us know in the comment section and be sure to subscribe to The Taco. Thanks for watching.